Now that we've given an overview of Java Lambda expressions, let's turn our attention to Java method references. In this part of the lesson, we'll describe how method and constructor references provide another foundational programming feature in modern Java. And we'll do this by taking a look at several examples that showcase these features that came out first in Java 8 and then have been expanded on in later versions of Java. A method reference is a compact, easy to read handle for a method that already has a name. You can think of it as basically shorthand syntax for a Lambda expression that executes one method. There are four different types of method references. We'll take a look at each of them in turn, and then we'll walk through some examples. The first type of method reference is a reference to a static method. This would be an example where we might have some class with a static method name in it. And you can think as an example of something like the string class and its value of method that can be used to create a string from various other data types. The corresponding Lambda expression for string colon colon value of would be S, where S would be an object, arrow, string dot value of S. The second type of method reference is a reference to an instance method of a particular object, one that has a name. The general syntax for this would be the containing object colon colon instance method name, as opposed to static method name, which is the previous version. An example might be a situation where we would have the variable s colon colon to string. If we were trying to represent this in lambda expression syntax, it would be s arrow s dot to string. The third type of method reference is a reference to an instance method of an arbitrary object of a given type. In this case, we would have the containing type colon colon method name. So an example might be where we'd use string colon colon to string, where to string is not a static method, it's a so-called instance method. Once again, the corresponding way of writing this with Lambda expression syntax would be s arrow s dot to string. And then finally, the fourth and final type of method reference is a reference to a constructor, which is commonly known as a constructor reference, but it's just another variant of a method reference that refers to a constructor. In this case, we have the name of the class colon colon new. So a good example might be string colon colon new, which is a constructor reference that will make a string when it's executed. And the corresponding Lambda expression might be open close paren to indicate no parameters, arrow new string. So those are the four different types of method references with some examples. Let's now talk about some of the benefits of using method references. Method references are more compact than the alternative mechanisms, in particular things like anonymous classes, lambdas, and of course, regular old classes. If you take a look at this diagram here, you can see how Java method references support a very concise form of behavior parameterization. It's not as flexible as lambdas for reasons that will become clear when we start looking at the examples, but it's very, very concise. So let's take a quick look and compare and contrast what we've looked at so far. So if you recall the earlier example we talked about when we were discussing Lambda expressions in earlier lessons, we talked about how you might have an array of strings, which would have the names of people in it. And then we looked at two different ways to sort that array of strings, one using the classic form with anonymous inner classes, which is very verbose, one that used Lambda expressions, which is more concise and more compact than the anonymous inner class approach. And then the third form, which is what we're looking at here, is where we're using method references, which I think you'll agree are even more compact and readable than Lambda expressions. In particular, what we're saying here is arrays.sort, open paren, name array, that's the same for all the three different variants, comma, and then here's where things get really, really concise. We say string colon colon compared to ignore case. So it's almost like passing a pointer to member function or a pointer to static member function in a language like C++. It's really, really concise and compact. This way of doing things also helps to promote reuse because in this case, we can have our arrays.sort method, which stays the same. And all we're doing is we're just parameterizing it with a method reference, which will then dictate the type of comparison that will be used. So this particular example here, we're passing in the compare to ignore case method via its method reference. But we could trivially change that to be string colon colon compare to, which is a version of comparison that does not ignore a case. And so you can think about this way of being able to replace the behaviors without changing anything else about the method implementation or the method syntax. You can think of this also as a variant of the strategy pattern from the Gang of Four book. In fact, it's very much like 
the form of strategy that's used with C++ and the C++ standard template library, a la functors, if you're familiar with functors. Therefore, it's, it's a good practice whenever possible to use method references, especially if you can replace Lambda expressions like the form we see here that's a little bit more verbose with very concise and compact method references. Again, as with Lambda expressions, modern IDEs like IntelliJ and Eclipse will automatically convert your Lambda expressions or your anonymous inner classes for that matter to method references when you can make that conversion. So let's wrap, wrap up this discussion by talking about how you could apply method references in practice. We'll show some examples. So we'll go back to the example we looked at before where we have an array of names that are represented as strings, and we'll show a couple of different ways to print these uh, arrays. We'll print them as collections or as arrays and so on. So one way to print things is to just use system.outprintlin, very classic way of printing things in Java. And we can use this to print out the contents of the array. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the list of factory method that takes a name array and converts it to a list. And then the println method knows how to print a list. So that's one way to do things. You can also use Java's for each methods to print out values in an array. And this will give us a chance to take a look at some interesting examples of method references here. So here's one way to do it. One way we could do this is to use Java streams, which will be covered in other parts of the courses we're doing. And we could say stream.of, which is a factor method that creates a stream from an array. And once we have a stream, then we can use the for each operator that's defined on stream in conjunction with the system.out colon colon print method reference. So this is passing in the print method as a method reference. And for each will then take that and it'll iterate through every element in the stream and call the print method in order to print out the results. You could also do something very similar in conjunction with a collection, for example, in this case, a list. So we could say list.of name array, which is kind of what we've done earlier when we did the println example. But then after that, we're gonna use the for each method that's defined on list. It's actually defined on iterable, but it can be used to a list or another for type of collection. So in this case, we're gonna take each of those elements that's in the list, and then we're gonna call the system.out colon colon print method reference in order to print the contents. And you can see what the results are on the slide. Just a little bit of trivia for you. It could come in handy later if you do a lot of work with streams. Even though both streams and lists or collections have a for each method, they differ ever so slightly in their semantics in very subtle ways. In particular, the for each ordering is undefined on a stream. So it basically says whatever order is most appropriate, do it that way. It leaves it up to the stream to decide. For sequential streams, this isn't really very interesting, but for parallel streams, it gives the implementation tremendous latitude and ways to optimize the behavior because it doesn't have to worry about serializing the results in any kind of order, like an encounter order. Conversely, the ordering is defined when you call for each on a collection or an iterable or a list because it does it basically from an iteration order, whatever the iterator returns from beginning to end. So it's more defined for a collection or a list or an iterable than it is for a stream, even though they both have the same name for each. So that's the end of our overview of method references in Java. Very powerful feature, very concise feature. I love to use method references wherever I can because I find it makes the code much more readable, certainly more readable than using an anonymous inner class, but generally also more readable than using a Lambda expression. So get to learn how to use method references and apply them whenever you can.